Good morning, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're sleeping, actually. It's 4.15 in the morning on Tuesday, June 22nd. Unbelievable. 2021. I am excited to have another moment of time to spend with you with Tata Dennis McDonald, my father-in-law. Um, we covered some ground today um, about Psalm 139. About when you're feeling alone, when you're feeling unnoticed or abandoned by God, it's good to spend some time in the Word and, and remember that Everybody's felt this, and and what are some words and what are some things you can do when you're feeling alone and like God's not paying attention? The fact is He's always there, and so we're going to cover some good ground in Psalm 139 and Psalm 13 today and uh, learn a little bit more about lament prayer and uh, just have a great talk with Tata. Um, Also mentioned in this episode, we talked again about the Bible study, John to Know, James to Grow. If you didn't take part of that back in April, um, I'm going to put the link back in the show note. This is a great 30-day Bible Bible study that I wrote, and I think it's great. People got a lot out of it. Um, where you can spend 30 days, just a few minutes each day, covering one chapter of the Gospel of John to get to know John, to get to know Jesus, rather, and one chapter of the book of James to get to know the practical applications of the Christian life. It comes to your email inbox. It's free, a few minutes every day, some questions to work through, and I think it will bless you as you get to know uh, James. Uh, practicality and John's intimate knowledge of Jesus for free. I'll put the link in the show notes. Check it out. John to know James to grow. And listen, I'm I'm sad to say this, but uh, it's the Lord has really put on my heart. It's um, I'm going to have to renege on something that I said. Um, we've been talking for a couple of months now about bringing you the Infinitely Happier Network, uh, working on our social media app, and we've just hit several walls uh, in the development of that. That I, I think it's time to just pause and wait. Um, it's it's taking a lot more time than we thought. Um, we're having some issues with the web development. We're having some cost issues and some time issues, and frankly, just it just feels like the the Lord might be saying, hey, it's not time to add that project right now. So we're going to pause that. Um, we still have the all the other great things that were going on. We just aren't ready quite to bring that network out, and frankly, we don't have the bandwidth to press through that little uh, barricade that we've hit. And so uh, we'll bring you more information about that, hopefully. I, I hope that someday we're able to launch it. But for now, we're going to pause that. Don't worry about it. we got all kinds of other great stuff coming at you, but infinitely happier network if you're waiting on that. Just just relax for a little bit. Uh, it's not coming as soon as we thought, so we're just going to hang on and not stress it, not push it. We want to bring if we if we do bring it to you, we want it to be right and perfect, and and uh, it's just not there yet. So we're going to wait a little bit on that. And as always, uh, if you have questions or prayer requests, and you want to talk to Tata about something or have him bring something up that you have raised as an issue that you'd like to talk with Tata about, email me at lee at drleewarren.com. I'm going to have a great day in surgery here. The sun will be coming up over the river soon. We're excited. And as always, we're excited to spend a little time with Tata. It's episode three of Tuesdays with Tata. We're going to cover Psalm 139 and some other ground today. And as always, we're going to start today. Hey, I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa Warren, and the super pubs, Harvey and Lewis, and soon Tata will be here as well. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get that done, you can get the show notes and more on my website at wlewarnmd.com, and if you like the show, Please share it with your friends. Share it with your friends all across the world. We're growing, getting stronger every month, helping people see the positive benefits of self-brain surgery. It can't happen if you don't share it. Subscribe to the show so you get every episode. I'm Dr. Lee Warren here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. we got Tuesdays with Tata. Let's get after it. Well, welcome back. It's episode three of Tuesdays with Tata. I'm here with my main man, my my best friend, my father-in-law, my pastor, Dennis McDonald. Welcome back, Tata. Thank you for having me. We're People are being blessed by this. I'm getting lots of uh, contact and emails and comments and people are enjoying you know, soaking up your wisdom as I always do. So I appreciate you taking the time and, um, and I can't wait for it to be face to face, which won't be long. You're coming in July, right? Yes. That's right. So that's a, you, that's a, after after July. I have one thing to do at July the second. That's a wedding. All right. So after I'm that, uh, you heard it here first. Tata's going to have his own microphone and his own <laughs> set of headphones, and he's going to be right here next to me. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, 
this week, I just want to spend a little bit of time. You know, we talk a lot about prayer and we talked a lot about the Bible and, and people have heard us say all those things. But I thought, you know, why not, why not get you to tell us what your favorite book of the Bible is, your favorite chapter, and if you have a favorite verse. And let's just talk about that for a minute. What's your, what's your favorite part of the Bible, Tata? Well, Psalms 139, and the reason is I've used it so many times um, in hospital ministry. And it mm-hmm. came to me a thought um, in, in verse, uh, and I have to put my glasses on here. Um, well, where, where the psalmist is talking about being fearfully and wonderfully made. Yep. And uh, I recall uh, a couple that I was with. Um, they, uh, he was born with inversa. Uh, his heart was on the other side of his chest. Uh, and I think he's had a lung transplant since then. But mm-hmm. after we prayed with him, he was in the hospital. And uh, he and his his wife and I were sitting in the waiting room, and she was really beside herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I read that Psalms 139 to her. And then when I got to that verse about being fearfully and wonderfully made, she just kind of broke down and started crying. Mm -hmm. And she said, now I understand. I have never owned his condition. This is our condition. Right. We're in this together. And we've been married at that time. I think she said nine years. Wow. And she had never considered it as being something that she owned. Well, it, it, the, whole, the, the whole chapter speaks to me as well. But it is, um, and, I've, and I've used the, the, the NIV. I, had the, I have yeah. the New King James Version as well. But it, it starts out so profound. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know, when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from far off. You discern my going out and my coming and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. Mm. Oh, oh, Lord. You hem me in behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where, where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I, sit, if I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me. The light, the light became night around me. It will not be dark to you. The light will shine like the day. The darkness is so light to you. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you. And I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. So what does that say? It says that God is all-knowing. So he's right. nothing, nothing, nothing escapes his attention. Uh, nothing is too difficult for him, and nothing is beyond his arm's reach. So he is he is all present, all knowing, and understands. That's so right. So nothing is new to him. That's right. I love this this part in verse sixteen when it says, "You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day has passed." So, so you see that this this notion that the enemy gives us that there are some things that happen to us that that are you know we're alone we're left alone in it that that it was right. surprising it's not surprising to God. God has a God has a purpose and a plan for every moment of our life and and it can be really hard to rectify some of the things that happen you know we can feel like God has abandoned us but but here David tells us no no you have he has not abandoned you he's always with you and he's known this was coming he was ready for it. That's right. That's right. And I like, I, I, I especially like, and it's very dear to me, the last, uh, the last part of the psalm, beginning in verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. What else do we need? Yeah. He knows us. Yeah. And all we have to do is agree with him. That's right. And it's okay here to admit that you're anxious. I mean, it, it, David Absolutely. was saying, God, I'm nervous. I'm stressed out. I don't know what's going on. Search me and, and know that and be here with me in it. 
um, I love 17 too. How, how, when you think God's not noticing you or God has abandoned you or God's not with you starting in 17, how precious are your thoughts about me? Oh God, they cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Absolutely. Right. So God's thinking right. about you. Friend. He's there. He doesn't, he doesn't forget about you. He's got your whole life laid out and he never stops thinking about you. I, lo- I love that. So that's very comforting when you're ministering to people in hospitals and, and um, you, you've, you've used that a lot. You've covered a lot of ground with people with that, that passage. Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, one the, I, I told Ronnie, my son, other son-in-law, Jessica's husband, this story uh, some time ago, uh, I went to a hospital. I found out the next day that this woman was in the hospital and I found, found her in a room and uh, her son was sitting on the edge of the bed and he said, mom, mom, look, Dennis is here. And so I, and I said, he said to me, Dennis, did you know that mom almost got to see Jesus last night? Apparently she had some kind of heart episode. Um, and he looked right and she didn't say anything. And so he said to her, mom, you, did you hear me? You almost got to see Jesus last night. She still didn't say anything. And he said, Mom, don't you want to see Jesus? And she said, no, not right now. Where are my clothes? <laughs> Sounds like us, right? Yeah. We decide. That's but right. that isn't what God intended. No. He, he intends that for us to lean on him. That's right. And trust him. That's right. Love it. So when I asked you, your favorite chapter, you said Psalm 139. Your favorite verse, you said John 3, 16 through 18. Let me read that, and you can tell us why that's your favorite passage. For God so loved the world, he gave his only and one son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his son into the world not to judge, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. The Pharisees, uh, and when when Jesus was on the earth, and the religious leaders, uh, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all all of those guys, they missed the point. They were looking for something to do. Yep. To add to the list so that they could be right with God. Yep. Yep. But God didn't start out like that. He That's loved right. us. And so he sent his son. So through, through his son, through Jesus' death on the cross, we've been redeemed. We've been bought back. We've, had, we've been bought back from sin when we had no hope. And now we have assurance of a home with God. And through the blood of Jesus, we have forgiveness of our sins. That's right. And he asked us to believe. Can it be that simple? can that's what you know. It's the the most important thing I got out of my recent study with uh, through John and James and friend. If you want to do that study, it's a thirty day uh, email series. It'll come to your inbox every morning for covering all of, all of John and James. We call it John to Know and James to Grow. And I'll put a link in the show notes if anybody wants to join and, and do that study. Um, but one of the things I learned is how many times Jesus said it plainly: "Believe in me, just believe me. If you believe me." I got gotcha. you like it was right. over and over and over and over. And then we try to turn, turn it into something so much more complicated than that. And you get off, you get off in the weeds and in, in some of Paul's writing and you can create whole, you know, mountains of doctrines out of some of those things. But Jesus said it plain, you know, you believe in me, you'll have everlasting life. That's right. So Accept incredible. him. Accept him and walk with him. That's right. Let him lead. That's right. So, friend, we've covered a little bit of ground here, and I, th- I think it's important to have a scripture that you can fall back on. I, I, we've talked about it a million times how the full armor of God, all those weapons that He meant, all those things that He mentions, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, and the you know all that, all that stuff. The only one that's a that's an offensive weapon is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
So the only weapon you have to take out into the tough things in life is your ability to fall back on scripture and for the Holy Spirit to be able to remind you of it when you're in the hard stuff. And having right. say take Psalm 139 and memorize it. Take John, you know, 3, 16, 17, 18 and memorize them so that when the pressure's on, you you fall back to that well of stuff that you've put in there that uh, you can use when you need to pull some encouragement out. So uh, Tata is one of those people that's just got a whole lifetime of Bible study in him. And I wanted to kind of see his example of how we can work through something and, 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 and let it become part of our toolkit too. So thank right. you for that, Tata. Thank you. And well, and I wanted, I wanted to mention this to you also when Patty was so sick, um, I th- I finally thanked God for the trial. And then I, I said to God, I just want to be, I just want to be a good servant for you. And I want to be a good servant for my wife. I make this sound, sometimes when I speak and I think about what I've said, that sounds so simple. Yeah. But that, that's not how I live. Okay. I live in anguish. and I live in pain and suffering as well. And there are anxious moments. But I know when I say that, I say to God, Okay, God, I know where that came from. Then I say to Satan, get out of my head, get out of my house, get away from my family. Amen. Because he brings doubts and fears and concerns that have no merit. That's right. And he reminds us of our weaknesses and he reminds us of our sin. You see, the folks down at the corner beer joint are low maintenance. He can send a little demon about six inches high down there. But for the rest of us that are trying to follow the Lord and want to be counted as his, he brings everything he's got. And so when you're alone in the still of the night and and you have those thoughts, just talk to God. Just talk to him. And when Patty was sick, that's what you had to do. Absolutely. Because I started out in rebellion in the whole process. Because I like the the Psalms, I've spent a lot of time in the Psalms, and and I was reminding God of all the things that I had done. And he didn't say anything. He didn't answer me. I did not feel, and then it dawned on me, what are you doing? And I think I've said this before about Revelations 24.1, or 21.4. No more. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more anxieties. No more pain. And so that's a day that I look forward to also. Amen. Amen. I got one that I worked through a lot after Mitch died. So it's a lament, really short lament in Psalm 13. David's or Asaph. For, I know it is David. He says, um, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? Yeah. yeah. How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O Lord, my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. And, and, and know this, grief is your enemy. Like that, that, that's, that's what I was feeling. It was that great loss that was defeating me and had the upper hand on me. And he says, but I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good for me. This is a perfect, short model of that uh, lament prayer. You turn to God. How long will you forget me, God? I'm, com- I'm complaining now. How long do I have to struggle? How long are you going to ignore me? How long will the sorrow bear over me? How long will the enemy of my pain have the upper hand? And then you're right. going to ask, you know, answer me, Lord. I need an answer. I-, I need you to answer me here. I need you to help me. I need you to come into this moment and give me something I can hold on to. And then you're going to trust. But I will trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you've rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he's good to me. And he's singing that. He's saying that in the midst of it. So he, he's, he hasn't he hasn't received the, the victory yet. He hasn't been relieved of the trouble yet. He's just trusting that God's going to do that. And, that, and that's where that's we right. get to. That's where we get to in life. You know, when you're going through something really hard, you can put it out there. God demands almost of you that you put it out there. If you, in fact, read the book of Job and Job's friends were blaming it on him and and saying, you must've done something wrong and God's abandoned you and God's forgotten you. And Job said, no, I'm going to take this to God. I'm going to tell him about it. I don't like it. I'm going to be faithful, but I'm going to talk to him about it. And in the end of the book, 
God says, Job, you were right. You were right to talk to me about this. It's your friends that got it wrong. You know, they need to right. Repent, right? <laughs> I mean, so, so we have permission. We have permission to bring those things to him. And that's the, that's a perfect lament. Psalm 13 is a great short little walk through that t- that style of prayer. And that's exactly what you're talking about when you were losing Patty. Yeah, because uh, it was like, um, uh, it, it's like looking into a void, looking yeah. into an abyss. Um, but the one thing that I, I kept trying to remember that even though that was so difficult, God was still there. Yeah, he was still now, there. Did he, did he let that happen? I don't know. It's not for me to know. My, what, what I need to do is trust him and That's rely right. on him. That's right. And you have, you, you've modeled that very well. Um, Hey, um, before we go, I got a couple of uh, things from the prayer wall I wanted to talk through, and then we can pray. Um, it, there, there's a couple of marriages that, that really have been on my heart that people have posted. One of them's anonymous. Um, one of them's anonymous. One of them's not. The first one is anonymous. It's the lady did not post her name, but she says, um, "Please pray that my husband and I can find peace through prayer in this hard season we found ourselves in." Married four years and started our relationship in 2013. Thank you for your time and consideration. Don't don't specify really what's going on, but just they're having a hard time. And a lot of people can relate to that right now. It's been a rough couple of years for everybody and marriages and relationships are struggling. And Jackie comes here with this prayer request. Please pray for my husband. He has struggled with depression his whole life. My heart breaks to see him struggle. Pray that God will show Randy that he doesn't have to live like that. Pray for me to show him the love of Jesus and help him through this. I know God is bigger. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I know God is bigger than depression, Amen. bigger than pain. He's bigger than this, and he's going to help that marriage. And so, so today, Tata, I, you know, I, I want you to pray for these two marriages and families, but larger, just pray for all marriage in general, relationships, families, um, because God's bigger. He's bigger Amen. than all those things, and he can That's defeat right. them. So l- let's pray. Amen. Well, Father, we thank you for this day that you have made, and we rejoice in it. And we Thank you so much for being mindful of us. Thank you for watching over us, protecting us from harm, especially the little ones, Father. We thank you for all of our blessings. We're blessed in abundance. We have more than we need. We're blessed and highly favored. And Father, we are, we are worthy of more than just your passing glance. And so we thank you for that. We are your children. We are yours and you are ours. And we thank you for that, Father. And Father, we, these two that have written in about uh, marriages that are struggling, and, and Father, we pray that you will intervene in that and that you would let them speak straight to each other, that they, yes. would re- that they would talk about what's on their heart and that they would rely on each other and that they would rely on you to guide them through it. And Father, for the lady that, whose husband is suffering from depression, I, that is so profound. That, that it even exists. I have no comprehension of that. But Father, I know that you know. And Father, I, I, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you would touch Randy and that, that, you, would, that you would restore him, Father. And Father, that, you would, that he would think more highly uh, of his wife than he thinks of himself and that he would rely on you and that he would wait on you because nothing happens overnight. My Father, we, there are so many that are struggling and so many that have, have faced losses, so many that are ill. And Father, they have, they, they, they are overcome. They're overcome with grief and anxiety and, and concern. And they are no longer listening. So Father, I pray that to your Holy Spirit that you would speak to them, that you would remind them that you love them, that you're concerned about them. And Father, yes, we, we always pray for miracles. And we always pray for healing and restoration. But Father, we wait on you because we know that you can do it. And so we ask you to demonstrate your mighty power in our presence for your glory, Father, not ours. Amen. Many times, Father, we rely on our own hands to do the work when we should simply trust in you. You said, be still and know that I am God. I don't know how to do that sometimes, Father, but I pray that you will teach us 
how to be still and wait on you. So, Father, we just ask you in the name of Jesus that you would come and that you would bring healing, that you bring restoration and recovery, and you would bring peace to so many that are suffering and hurting. Father, we know that this world is not our home. But day to day, some days it's hard to get through. But, Father, we trust you and we rely on you and we have confidence in you. We know that you know. And I've said this before, but I, I, I always have tried to be like Job. When Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. And I know that he will stand on the earth one day. But knowing that his Redeemer lives is so powerful. Knowing that Jesus Christ is with us. Jesus Christ is ever present. And so we wait on you, Father, but we trust you. And like I said before, we have confidence in you and we, we just wait on you. But we beg you to come now. Don't hold back. Come now. And we beg all of this and we plead all of this in the precious and sweet and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, your Son, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tata. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is going to help somebody. Get yourself, some scripture. get yourself some scripture, friend. Get yourself some full armor and uh, put it in your heart and uh, and live it out. It'll help you. I promise it'll help you more than anything else that I can say or do. Get yourself some word. So, Tata, if somebody's going to start getting into the word, when do they need to start? Today. <laughs> start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get special episodes every month, only available to the patrons. They get free books, transcripts, and all kinds of extra stuff. And partners like you allow us to stay ad-free and keep on growing. Hey, please subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. And go to my website, wleewarnmd.com, for more information about my newsletter. wleewarnmd.com slash newsletter is the place to connect to this community of great folks all over the world who are helping each other change their minds and change their lives all my stuff's on the website w1md.com check it out the theme music for the show is water into wine by tommy walker graciously provided for free by tommy and all the good people over at tommywalkerministries.org tommywalkerministries.org check out their newest album highest praises it is awesome hey if you need prayer or if you're willing to partner with us in praying for other people go to the prayer wall w1md.com slash prayer wleewarnmd.com slash prayer is the place to go to connect with people and pray for each other and with each other and for anything that's on your heart all over the world wleewarnmd.com slash prayer remember friend you can't change your life until you change your mind and we have to start today i'm dr lee warren heading off to surgery soon i'll talk to you next time god bless you hey have a great day friend